welcome to the second edition of Editing with Jeff. The people that sent me in, uh, sent images in, because this week I'm going over everybody else's images. Um, and some of you are really good and some of you don't have a clue. But um, we're all very nice people. Uh, <laughs> uh, the reason is that, uh, the reason I say, uh, some of you don't know how to put XF metadata in your files. So there are a couple of images whose um, uh, uh, unknown photographer. Uh, so, um, and then the other thing I was going to say is I think it would be fun uh, if the person whose image I'm, oh, Sashi, do something about your face. <laughs> your, your image uh, is of a, a Chinese pagoda or something. Yeah, it's That's like green weird. screen reverse. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but what I was going to say is the person whose image I'm going to go over, uh, if they want to volunteer to raise their hands and interact with me, because some of the Obviously, what I'm going to be doing is images that um, are somebody else's, although I have experience doing this. Remember, I uh, got hired by Adobe to process and adjust 4,000 4, images um, uh, just in order to uh, uh, teach their uh, AI, the Sensei, Sensei AI, how to adjust raw images. And they still don't get it right. Uh, although dealing with an AI is like dealing with a three-year-old. If you don't give it explicit, absolute instructions, it kind of comes up with weird shit all on its own. Um, I'll just start at the beginning. I put everything into one uh, folder. And uh, I don't know that it's necessarily... No? Okay. I'm just going to go the... There are some images that are loose in the folder and some that are in subfolders. That was the other thing I didn't get a chance to really go through. So anyway, I'm just going to start at the very beginning of the alphanumeric and show you these two images. So whose image is this? That would be mine, Paul Pritchett. Thank you, Paul. Paul? OK. So um, what I'm going to do is hide this for the moment. Um, the image on the left is the default. And the image on the right is what I, uh, I ended up coming up with. The, the crop was somewhat arbitrary. Uh, but uh, Paul, what do you think of the image on the right? I like what you've done. It's 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 interesting. I didn't actually pick this picture in the end to when I did my edits back then. Picked one with a little bit darker sky, and I like what you've done here with the with the colors. Okay, so this is the final image. This is what it looked like at default, and then this is what it looked like um, when I got done with it. Mm -hmm. And let me just show you briefly what I ended up doing. I ended up doing some global adjustments, uh, a very subtle highlights adjustment of minus 100, and a very subtle shadows adjustment of plus 100. I like subtlety, unlike Kevin Raber. Um, pulling down the whites and the blacks. Mm -hmm. If you look at the histogram of the default image, you can see that uh, there's a bunch of data here in the shadows. So basically, this is redistributing uh, a lot more in the middle, which is basically the midtones. Mm -hmm. uh, I added texture, clarity, dehaze, um, not an awful lot of, uh, I actually had to pull a little bit of uh, uh, saturation. Uh, but the, the key things here were doing the, um, okay, you can actually see that. I'm, I'm checking on my, uh, iPad so that you can see the actual uh, uh, mask. Mm -hmm. um, I so it. I pulled down exposure and one of the things that I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you up front, the gradient tool 
is not done as far as I'm concerned, because I wanted to be able to skew the mid mid tone. So the or the midpoint. So right here is the midpoint. Does that, everybody see that? I would like to be able to say, okay, I want to change the gradation so it's a hundred percent here. And instead of ending in the middle at 50%, I want 50% to be here and a sharper fall off. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and, and the fact that they have not listened to me pisses me off because this tool is not done yet. Uh, so what I often have to end up doing is multiple gradations to build up the actual gradation that I want. And it's a pain in the ass, but as long as you understand, understand the limitation, you can do that. Um, in addition to the um, uh, uh, gradient, you can see here, let me make sure that all the green, come on. No, it's not showing the mask. It was a moment ago. Yeah, well, it, yeah was? it was. Okay. It was showing. Okay. There it is. Okay. So here you can see what I've done uh, uh, is used a localized dehaze. And I, I, one of the things that, that you have to understand about uh, clarity and dehaze is that it often does good things in some places and really bad things in other places. So uh, one of the tricks to using dehaze uh, I found is to apply it only where it helps and to take it off where it hurts. Um, then there was another uh, image here, which is plus clarity uh, and plus whites and minus saturation. And also you'll notice up here adjusting the white balance because uh, it seems like um, old castles want to end up looking real fucking orange. I don't know why they like them that way, uh, but it must be the old kind of lamps that they've, that they've installed. And it'd be nice to put daylight balanced LEDs everywhere, but uh, that ain't going to happen. So anyway, being able to adjust the uh, color, I think, really helps. Mm -hmm. So again, the default and then... Uh, so, um, any questions about this? This was Paul, right? Yes, it was. No, okay. actually, so, I, I was watching along. I love it. I did not have this version of Lightroom when I did this back in in the day, and didn't have the clarity or the de uh, not clarity, but the texture, the dehaze available to me. Uh, uh -huh. I love how you've done. No excuse, Paul. That's no excuse. <laughs> no, the reason I say yeah. that is one of the things that the fucking engineers keep doing is they keep improving the software, which means you've got to go back and revisit images because they will be better um, than they used to be. <laughs> In other words, you can get more out of the image now than you could out of Lightroom 10 years ago. And that's just, that's the way it is. Hey, Jeff, question for you on, you, you were showing the mask for dehaze. Is that still the option? Um, but how, how do you get the mask for those to show up. Okay, well, you go down here and you can select show uh, edit pins auto and show mask overlay. Okay. Just okay. want to make sure everybody could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or, yes, somebody posted that you can click on the O key to uh, turn it on and off without having to turn th this uh, on and off. Yep. And then shift O allows you to change the overlay color. So yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the next victim. Uh, I'm sorry, the next person. And this, I've been there. Although I don't know that I was there when this was shot. You were. Um, whose is this? This is Bob Peterson. Hi, Bob. That, that's the gullet. Yeah, that's, that's the, the gullet. gullet. Yep. Were you on the shot? Uh, were you on the trip with Kevin and I? Yes, in 2009. Oh, okay. Man, that's a okay. long time. So that was a hell of a I, day. Did, I did shoot this exact same thing. 
Because <laughs> I looked at it and it's like, well, how did somebody get my image? <laughs> um, which I thought was actually pretty funny. So let me just show you what I did. And Bob, let me know what you think. Um, I think I did a pretty decent job. Here's the default, which clearly you, you have taken the exposed to the right Kool-Aid and overdosed on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Was this accidental or on purpose? purpose? Very carefully. <laughs> okay. So you know that there is actually a little bit of clipping, although quite honestly, who the fuck cares? Uh, but this is a prime example. It's kind of like my Niagara uh, Falls shot, uh, where you can get an, uh, an enormous amount of detail out of stuff. So here's what I was able to do globally. And you can see the adjustments. Now, can everybody actually see the basic panel well? No. Yes? Yes. Because yes. what I can do is zoom in. No, I Wait can see for it. Fine. Wait for it. Oh, I guess. I guess it doesn't zoom in on Zoom. The <laughs> Zoom is broken on Zoom. God damn it. That's all okay, right. So we can see it fine, Jeff. Okay. Um, so the the bottom line is let me make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Uh, the bottom line is uh, taming the highlights. Uh, while maintaining texture and then opening up the shadows. And so pulling down the overall exposure uh, is probably one of the, the, the biggest things. Uh, and, and of course, when you do that, you have to increase the whites. Uh, one of the things that I found is that if you adjust highlights and shadows, you're going to be adjusting, the, you have to adjust the blacks and the whites. Um, Exposure is the overall lightness and darkness, and it behaves very much like opening or closing an f-stop. Um, and then contrast is increasing the um, s-curve or flattening the s-curve if you do minus contrast. Uh, but again, you might think it would be odd that you'd want to increase contrast, but with lowered contrast, it starts to look flat. Uh, let me go back to the global. Okay. And then clarity. Clarity is great for bringing up uh, textural detail in the mid-tones and below, although you've got to be careful because it does also have a tendency to punch out the whites. So you have to use it judiciously. Um, you all know what um, uh, clarity does, right? It's a mid-tone a uh, contrast increaser. It lightens the lights and darkens the darks on either side of the edge, but it's like sharpening, except for in sharpening, you're dealing with like plus or minus a half pixel <clears throat> or a one and a half or three pixel radius. Midtone contrast, um, the clarity tool is based upon a hundred pixel blur. So, uh, and that's one of the problems um, with clarity is that you can't adjust that uh, radius. If you actually do the mid-tone contrast and Matt Colbert had an action, um, I, can I can post that action on a thread. Uh, I, I anticipate there should be a discussion thread after this. Uh, there wasn't much after the first one but I was going to post some notes up into that thread. Uh, but the ability to change the radius is important. Now, you can't do that with uh, Lightroom and Camera Raw. So then on top of the global, of course, is the local. And that's kind of where you really, I kind of think of global as being the overall look of the image while the local is what you do to direct the eye within the image. Does that make sense to everybody? Perfect. In other words, you highlight certain areas to draw attention to them. Um, and, you know, in some of the cases, I may have gone a little bit overboard. Uh, the texture right here, I thought was the most, well, this whole area right here was the most interesting area. 
And so I paid a lot of attention to that uh, locally. Now, um, I guess I did do a couple of gradients. Here's the top gradient. Then there's the top half gradient. Again, minus highlights, that's to tame the highlights. And then the bottom was to pull saturation. One of the things, <laughs> yeah, you start increasing contrast, even subcontrast, uh, like midtone contrast, and you end up with uh, your saturation sometimes getting wanky. And so you've got to pull that back, particularly down in Antarctica. Uh, colors were just impossible. Now they may have been natural or accurate, but they look weird. Yeah, so, exactly. uh, like that was a saturation weird. day. Yeah. That, like everything was saturated. Yeah. So yeah, desaturation. Um, but then those were the only three, and then the local is where I really ended up. Uh, th there was actually desaturation and color temp. Uh, did a lot of work in the shadows. You can see I'm increasing the contrast of the shadows, darkening the blacks, lightening the whites, increasing the clarity. Remember, clarity really brings up the, uh, the uh, contrast uh, around in the midtone areas. And another one here. Um, if possible, it's useful to minimize the number of, of uh, local adjustments uh, because uh, it's been my experience, uh, your performance, particularly when you do a, an adjustment with auto mask turned on, auto mask is computationally very uh, intensive and to generate the preview of the image with the auto mask on, it's enormously computationally intensive, and that can have an adverse effect on your overall Lightroom performance. I, I imagine a lot of people find that, that uh, working with a lot of local painted adjustments with auto mask turned on uh, slows way down. And then here's another area, uh, again, increased contrast, increased clarity. So that's basically it. Here's the default. Here's the global, which isn't bad, but then here's the local, which is just really punched up. So, Bob, what do you think? I like your local a lot. Yeah. I wish I had it on my wall. That can be arranged. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that I was going to offer to do is now here's the weird thing is I can send this. Um, I want to see if I want to offer this. Um, <laughs> well, because I there are 30 some odd images. Um, um, I can actually send you the XMP metadata to this file um, so that you could actually load that. Now you'd have to do that in camera raw. Uh, because it's not easy to associate um, a, a separate XMP file in Lightroom. It, it's easy to do in Camera Raw. It's just harder to do in Lightroom. Uh, the only complicating factor is this was done with the yet-to-be-released version of Lightroom. Uh, I think it's Lightroom 10, uh, which I thought was going to be out this week. Uh, they had one more build that I downloaded, so uh, probably not going to be out until next week. Uh, but the XMP file, of course, is just really tiny um, uh, uh, text file, which is amazing that, that all of this stuff that you do to an image can be reduced down to a tiny metadata file. So. Okay, so the next one, how am I doing for time, Kevin? Uh, you're at 5.30, so you've only been going 20 minutes, and technically we can go to 6.30. We said an hour and a half, but um, okay, just keep your eye on the clock. No, you keep your eye on the clock. I'm paying attention to the image. Well, um, we're in touch, gotcha, so, buddy. Yeah. Uh, so whose is this? 
Are they here? I had one no? or two people tell me they couldn't make it and they'll watch the recording, so. Okay. Well, whoever this is, it's, it's actually a really nice shot, um, but I, it, it very flat. And so obviously one of the things that I ended up doing, here's the default and then here's the final. Um, I wanted, and, and you know, there's uh, one gradient uh, minus exposure plus whites for the sky. That's to darken the blue. Um, although I think I may have also done a, yeah, I did a saturation reduction in the sky uh, because again, when you darken it, it tends, and then I did a luminance reduction as well. That's just to, you know, control the sky. But then the localized adjustments is where I kind of brought up the magic. Uh, here again, um, this was increase in the whites. I guess I just did that very subtly. Uh, oh, I did also warm up the lights. You can see the color temperature is uh, uh, at five or plus 10. Then down here is uh, where a lot of the texture was brought out of the ripples um, and minus exposure plus contrast a lot, minus highlights, minus shadows, plus whites, and then plus clarity. The clarity, again, really helps bring up that uh, uh, textural contrast. And I guess that was it. Um, I think, no. No color adjustments on that. So, um, Kevin, you pretend you're the author of this photo. What do you think from there to this? I, I think you did a cool job. I think the, the amazing part is how you recovered the detail and the shadows that were basically washed out. And I think it's the only other thing I would do is say, well, you know, because it's kind of monochromatic already, wondering whether, you know, you can do one of those black and whites with a dark sky or something. So I would probably uh, take it once it, it's at this level and also look at it in black and white. Well, that's true. I mean, you can, um, and this is uh, the profile browser uh, with the default. Oh, I just noticed something that I got to show you. Uh, this is the default black and white conversion profile. Uh, these are useful. It's literally as much as Thomas and Eric could figure it out a recreation of panchromatic contrast filters for black and white. So the red filter, sky dark, <clears throat> blue filter, sky lightened. Uh, so I'm gonna close that. But let me also show you, I'm pretty sure what I ended up doing. Uh, you took the blue out there. Yeah, no, um, in terms of the color grading, I gotta tell you, the about half the time when I'm outside shooting, uh, I will end up warming up the highlights and cooling down the shadows. And the reason I do that is it's a recreation, it's fake, okay? It's not real, it's fake. It's a recreation of later light. As the sun goes further on the horizon, it goes through more atmosphere and the blue light tends to get filtered out of the atmosphere so that the, the color temperature of the actual sun hitting things is warmer, but, and it's also darker, so that the contrast of the brightness of the sun, it starts coming down. Um, uh, and then what ends up happening is the strength of the overall skylight, which is very blue, gets brighter. So the thing about sunset is that the direct light is is warm orange and the skylight is, uh, if you've got a blue sky, is kind of cold blue. So that's what I ended up doing. Under the highlights, you can see that I've punched up the saturation quite a bit and also done a luminance adjustment. One of the things that white sands, Antarctica, white sometimes is not white, um, it's really tough to kind of play how you want to adjust the color of something that's supposed to be white. But 
pretending this is late light and accentuating the impact of the shadowing, I, I wanted to lighten the whites. And this is something that you could not have done in the old uh, split tone. So this color grading is pretty way cool. <laughs> when I first saw it, and I was an early alpha, uh, Max went, one of the engineers sent it to me. And, uh, you know, I, I get to see this shit way before you guys do. And my first reaction was, oh man, this is going to be way more difficult to do split tone. He said, well, yeah, there are a lot more sliders. Uh, there's also different ways of visualizing that you can visualize in three um, um, spheres. Uh, but I actually like dealing with like one at a time. So that, that way, because actually adjusting here, I'm trying to rotate the hue and I find that very tweaky compared to just doing this or typing in a number. There are times that I know the exact number. Um, so for example, on my black and white stuff, I like 44. Um, and, and so I'll just type in 44. So then here's the shadows. And you can see that the shadows now are cooled down. Um, the blending is how the light and the dark and the mid-tone go together. And the balance is like the old balance in the uh, split tone. Uh, it lets you taper off where the effect occurs. So let me just go back to the final because I liked it. Yeah, there we go. That help? Yep, very good. It's actually pretty cool what you can do with that now. So maybe we need to do a whole video on that together. You can try yeah, to maybe. convert me. Yeah, you know, if as soon as you put your big boy pants on and want to grow up and learn how to do shit, I'll teach you how to use Lightroom. Otherwise, play with your little Capture One toy all you want. <laughs> Don't listen to anything he says. <laughs> uh, this, okay. uh, is this Tom and Marges or one of, who, who's yes, this? Yes, it's Marges. Marges, okay. They Mar you guys do such great black and white. So go, go ahead, Jeff, that's cool. Yeah, well, yeah, but I think those are the guys that were screwing with my head, sending me infrared stuff. Is that you guys? Yeah, Tom's images are all on a converted infrared camera. Yeah, well, I got I got a comment about Tom, but I'll leave that until I get to one of his images. Uh, so this is actually a really neat old drill press. Uh, and the image on the left is the original color image. And it's at default. I didn't mess with um, mucking around with the color. So let me go ahead and close that. Uh, so the image on the left is what I did. The image on the right is what you did. And I, I like yours. Um, I do think that mine would be better for printing digitally, uh, primarily because of the fact that I'm compressing the contrast a little bit. Your whites are a little bit, I think, too bright and your shadows may be a little bit dark. Uh, also, we kind of played with emphasizing and de-emphasizing things a little bit differently. Uh, I really like the texture uh, and the center detail that's going on here and didn't really care about the wood all that much. You seem to have the wood quite bright down in here. Um, so anyway, let me show you how I did that. Um, so Marge, what do you think of mine versus yours? It's a little bit hard because I'm taking them immediately into, after I finish the Lightroom adjustment, taking it into Photoshop. And, and then fucking it up. That, and the <laughs> lot of things that you did, I did in Photoshop in layers. But yes. I, I love what you did. I'd love to see how yeah. you did it. Okay, well, let me show you how I did it. Um, so here is the, the, here's where you started. Uh, well, that's what you gave me at the import. This is actually the default. Right. Uh, and this is what you sent me. This is the global adjustments. And let me show you the global uh, plus exposure overall, a lot of shadow uh, opening, uh, a lot of clarity, a lot of texture, um, really stomping on the blacks and the whites, uh, not so much. Um, and it is interesting because 
when you convert to black and white, and this is just the Adobe monochrome, I didn't do a, a special black and white profile. Um, it's amazing what different color balances, how it impacts black and white. So the, the black and white conversion is actually being done after the uh, color adjustments from the camera color to the mosaic RGB. And, and so the white balance, uh, uh, all that is happening before it's converted to black and white. So it's another tool for mucking about. Uh, so let me go back to the, what I did. Uh, I think I may have done, nope, I didn't do any tone curve. Um, so then the trick was coming in on the local. And, uh, here I did quite a bit with my little brush. Uh, did a lot. Uh, just start at the top. This is increasing exposure, increasing shadows to open up shadow detail. Uh, this is just an overall general um, non-layer, non, -layer, non um, well, I guess when I did this, I don't, I, I didn't have auto mask on. Um, you can't remember how the brush stroke was done uh, in history. So, but I can just tell by looking at it, it's an overall general adjustment. Another one, but minus the, uh, a couple of parts. Mm -hmm. And then another so, yeah, one. Each, each one of those dots is representing, for lack of better words, a layer then. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not a layer. It's an adjustment stack. Consider okay. it okay, an adjustment stack. stack. All right. Um, and uh, it is, I mean, the, the, the stack above um, does impact the stacks underneath. So here... Uh, I punched up the um, uh, overall exposure um, in portions of the of the wheel, and then coming down, doing some localized adjustments. Uh, and, and a lot of this is just doing it by eye and playing with it. What did I do here? Ah, again, more shadow, more exposure. Again, more shadow, more exposure. This was knocking down and getting rid of a lot of that uh, detail. How long did this take you to do, Jeff? You did an awful lot of stacks. I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Um, uh, it's not so much the doing of it that takes a long time. It's the looking at the image and deciding what to do that takes a long time. <laughs> so then the age old question will come, when do you feel and how do you decide when you want to stop? Uh, when my wife calls me for dinner. <laughs> hey, by the way, um, I put a link in the uh, chat section, Tom and Marge, uh, who kind of shoot together all the time, uh, did an excellent article on black and white on our site. So the link is there if you want to look at it. Uh, sometime in the future, take a look at it or click on it so you have it and read it later. Now, uh, the other thing is that, uh, Marge, the black and white you gave me was neutral, no, no color or tone, but there is no such thing as no color or tone. Uh, the moment that ink hits paper, it's going to have a color. And so I always use, well, it used to be the split tone, now it's the uh, color grading. I always like to have uh, manual control over the color. And in general, um, in the, for example, in the highlights, um, a plus warm. Oh, I did 45 instead of 44. I must have feeling a little bit red. Um, <laughs> uh, also adjusting uh, the saturation. It's not a highly saturated. I mean, if I run this up a lot, you can see that it will start to get really warm. Um, the balance is, uh, and the blending are adjusted, um, but then in the shadows coming in and cooling down the shadows, uh, again, I like to have kind of the old uh, split tone effect. Um, I used to do 
um, a lot of sapia selenium toning. Uh, I used to uh, I used to like to sapia tone cotabromide. Does anybody remember? Uh, yeah, I can remember it well. Yeah, but it was cool because if you did a very very light sapia tone um, with cotabromide, which had a cool black, you'd have warm highlights, and and it's just I like that kind of feeling of, of warmth and coolness. And if you look at it, I mean, you're seeing uh, my image projected through my LED, my um, NEC um, display captured by Zoom sent to you on whatever device you're looking at on. So it's kind of, you know, um, it's complicated. But Marge, you like the coloration very much. Or do you like just dead neutral? I like the way it appears. I'd like to have to see it in print to tell. Yeah, that's the key. Uh, but, and also it depends if you wanted to, let's see this. A lot of that would depend on what paper you're going to use. So for example, if I was going to be using the legacy plantain, um, that actually can simulate ink and paper. Uh, that's actually not bad. If I was printing it on luster, you'll see that it looks really cool. Um, luster has a has a uh, um, uh, a whitening agent in the paper, which kind of makes it look cool. Um, I don't know if you guys are seeing the subtlety of that on Zoom. Are you? A little bit. Yeah, okay, so I won't waste a lot of time. Um, but anyway, that's that. And then, uh, very nice, and thank you very much for letting me muck about your image. And just, you know, you had, the, I didn't even have to resort to Photoshop. I just did this in Lightroom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, Okay, so this was actually cool. When I first looked at it, it's like, what the hell is this? Uh, but it's apparently two Bengal tigers uh, mating, no, fighting. <laughs> um, so the image on the left is the original. Whose is this? It's mine. Say your name. Mine who? Rich Fisher. Richard. Yeah. Cool. Was this in Not India? Yeah. Yeah. And it was two males fighting? Yes, it was. Yeah, so it wasn't a male and a female. It, it, this was not rape or incest. This was male dominance. This was territorial fighting, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, and I went to a square format mainly because of the fact that I kind of like the dynamics. Uh, you know, uh, you didn't have anything really on the image when you sent it. So I don't know how you cropped it. What do you think of the square? I like the square. I, I worked, this is five, six years old, maybe longer. I tried working, I got nowhere. And waiting for, now I have COVID, I had the COVID time, we could spend more time on it. Well, what do you think of mine? I like it. Yeah. I can you wonder how I get it? Huh? I can see the tigers now. Yeah. Well, that's part of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, you want to know how I did it? Definitely. Yeah, I said abracadabra. Poof. Hocus pocus, yeah. Yeah, hocus pocus. Um, okay, so uh, there was some uh, local adjustment, which basically in this area, this was a minus 100 uh, because the stuff that is just a little bit out of focus bothers me. But stuff that is way out of focus, I think, is pretty. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. So if you, if you can't get everything in focus, uh, make what is out of focus more pretty or prettier. And so what I ended up doing was a minus 100. And in the local adjustment, anything from minus 50 to minus 100 in, introduces lens blur. And it's lens blur as a, a la... Uh, Photoshop. So basically, if I turn that off, you can see 
the softening effect that is going on, particularly here and up here. I also did some painted in. Uh, now I didn't do any tone or color. Um, okay, so now locally, God, you really recovered on the highlights. You went all the way over on those, didn't you? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. You, it is what it is. You do what you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> um, so in the middle of the body, it, you know, plus contrast, plus clarity, bring up texture, um, uh, uh, plus exposure. But I, I couldn't do that all at once. So here's another the bringing up. I tried to get more of the other tiger's face. It's just obscured too much by the water. Um, I, I might actually want to come back in. And if, if I were to do this in Photoshop and have the ability to really kind of come in here and darken down a little bit of this mist here to punch this so it came forward a little bit more like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I just didn't have the patience to do it in Lightroom. Um, this tummy was starting to get too washed out. Then here's another adjustment of minus 100. This was to create a uh, uh, greater sense of blurred out. So does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Looks nice. Looks very nice. And well, again, um, I can send you the, the XMP file for this. I would appreciate uh, that. Okay. Nice tigers. Uh, then we've got these balloons. Um, this was a tough one, mainly because of the fact that the uh, fire of the, the, what do they call the? The burners. The burners, the burners uh, just so hot. So here's the default, here's the final. Um, a lot of this was just done by multiple applications of plus clarity, uh, plus shadows to lighten and darken in other areas, taking down the highlights. Again, taking down the highlights. So can you layer on different layers uh, and like take down the highlights and, you know, go back and then hit the same area again and take down the highlights? Is it, can you step it like that? Yes. It, yeah, it is a cumulative. What, a, what is applied on top is subject to what is underneath. Now question, why would you decide to use highlights instead of exposure in some cases? I don't know, uh, because that's the right tool. It, it's, you, well, no, I mean, you're not dealing with the whites, you're not dealing with the midtones. Yeah. So exposure would be the wrong tool. Okay. If I want to darken the highlights, I darken the highlights with the highlight tool. That's why there's a highlight tool, because Perfect. that's what Thomas wanted. That makes sense? Yep. And, and you know well enough, if you, if you want to argue with Thomas, you better come fully armed and prepared. <laughs> oh, I know, know how to do that well if I have to. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in this case, I actually did a little bit of uh, minus clarity. Uh, so whose image is this again? Uh, this is Paul Pritchett again. Oh, Paul. Okay. So what do you think? I like it. I didn't, I, I like the localized. I, I, it's on my list of things to go back and edit and you've uh, given me a pretty good recipe here. Yeah. Now the thing that I'll point out is that there are areas where highlight recovery cannot restore the color. Mm -hmm. And in Lightroom, this would be very difficult. You see where the center of the cursor is? Yep. Um, there's also this color, this gray color here. Um, in, in Photoshop, that would be pretty easy to clone just the color. 
uh, of the balloon to the gray area to add that color. Um, so, uh, you know, this is a situation where this is pretty good getting it done in, in the raw file, but there's the, everything comes to a point at which, you, you know, you can't get everything done in raw. Um, and also uh, particularly difficult when you start um, getting to the extent of the design of the tool. In other words, you, you hit these hard limits. They're just not designed for what, sometimes what I'm using them for. So here's another, uh, a lot of these are just really hard to light environments where you've just got high dynamic range. Um, this is a, a prime candidate for an HDR, um, you know, set it up on a tripod and do a five shot bracket, uh, plus or minus uh, um, one or two stops. Uh, and then do an HDR adjustment. But uh, if you're willing to work it, you can get it to look like this. Now here's the default. Here's the global, which isn't too bad. It was primarily a, a bunch of gradients. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not gradients yet. It was basically doing a lot of tone uh, adjustments. Uh, also, you'll notice that I added a little bit of grain. Uh, let's see what that looks like at 100%. Let's look at it at 200%. Wait for it. There it is. And one of the reasons that I did that is when I opened up the image exposure, obviously you really make the grain get um, very obvious. And one of the things that I like doing uh, is uh, making uh, lemonade out of lemons. You know, if you've got a grainy situation, uh, make it grainier <laughs> uh, or at least control the grain. Uh, I did do some luminance noise reduction, uh, 30, uh, but then I came back in and did a plus uh, grain, uh, a fairly large grain fairly rough with a pretty high amount. I might actually back that down. Um, it's kind of a season to taste. The other thing is the, the grain amount that you want to do really depends on how big you're going to look at the image. Because one of the best ways of uh, noise reduction is uh, downsampling. <laughs> um, you, you wouldn't think of it, but if you're going to post something on the, on the web, uh, relatively small, a lot of times you don't have to worry about noise reduction. So whose image was that? Bob Peterson again. Ah, okay, Bob, you busy. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what do you think of the two? I'm impressed. Okay. Uh, much so better than I did. Let me show you also what I did locally. Um, obviously, we've got a gradient going on. I guess I just did it with a single gradient of minus exposure. And then did quite a bit of work. Um, there's opening up the shadows, darkening down. There was that one light area that got kind of ugly down in there that I thought was distracting. And then this area got a little bit too light, so I darkened that down. And then, uh, what did I do? Oh, yeah, lightened up uh, plus whites there. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty good what you can do in terms of pulling out textural detail. But again, uh, this would have been a lot easier to do if I had an HDR. Somebody actually gave me an HDR, that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so here is another, set the upper six, left jeff just so you know it's six o'clock so we have a half hour to go we may have to reschedule a, another one of these or two if we don't get through them all so um okay well i'm gonna jump past uh, the antarctic and start doing some other things that are a little bit more different all right just want to watch the time and give everybody a chance yeah so the upper left is the original um uh, 
the lower right. No. Uh, yeah, the lower right is the one, the JPEG that the fellow, whose image is this? It's mine, Jay Tannen. Hey, Jay. Jay. Um, and then uh, this was my uh, attempt. I actually, I, I kept this because I, I, the upper right one, uh, I actually kind of liked because uh, if you're telling the story, I thought it was interesting to see the ambulance. On the other hand, depending upon the context of the story, if the ambulance is ancillary, it's distracting. And then uh, the lower left is my final. Mm -hmm. um, I thought yours was just a little overblown, particularly in the second guy's face and the first guy's nose. Mm -hmm. um, but let me show you uh, how I did mine. Um, here's the default. Here's the global. And then here's the local. Let me show you what the local adjustments were. Quite a few. Um, opening up and lightening the faces. Also adding clarity. Um, that one eye got pretty dark, so uh, opened up the shadow of it, but darkened down the highlights. Again, lightening the face mm -hmm. or face lightening. One of the things that bothered me, I didn't want to get rid of it because it was interesting, but the texture and tone of this guy's shirt, I thought was a little bit too hot. So I tapped that down. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, what, what do you think of my adjustments? I, I like it. It's just uh, increased my knowledge. I'll, uh, I like the way you looked at it and what you did. Thank you. Okay. Um, so what do you think about the crop? Well, the crop, I mean, basically the story was these four people were just walking down the street. I laughed. Uh, I just stopped them with my hand, took the picture, and I had nothing to do with the ambulance. Okay. And to me, so, represented Cuba, the people. Okay. So then the question is, um, uh, keep or get rid of the photographer? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually darkened him down quite a bit uh, and just kind of cut a little bit out of him. But I like that guy's hat. So I would probably do it this way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, again, if you're interested, you could see the uh, local adjustments. Um, this one, let me do this because this was really challenging. Um, and uh, whose was this? This was Tom. That's Tom's. Right. Yeah. So let me just show you what this looked like at default. Uh, let me just reset it. Eek! <laughs> <laughs> the in infrared converted camera, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, but um, it actually is pretty interesting. Uh, and then here is the side by side. Now, um, the image on the right has the advantage of having spent considerable amount of time in Photoshop. Is that correct, Tom? Yes. Yeah. Yes. In fact, perhaps more <laughs> than a considerable amount of time. I think you probably spent more time in Photoshop than you did in Lightroom. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. I'm still uh, learning Lightroom. Yeah. But if you look at mine compared to yours, um, again, yours is nice and contrasty and snappy, uh, but I think your shadows would plug up a little bit and your highlights blow out a little bit if you were going to print it. Uh, mine is a little bit softer and a little bit more open. Um, but I mean, it's just, I mean, this is very subtle seasoning. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but what do you think of mine versus yours? Oh, I like yours. Yes. And, and, and I like the softness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
you, so you understand what I'm saying. There's this tendency of getting a little heavy handed. Kevin does that. He calls it raborize and thinks it's a, it's an asset. People um, love it. People love it a lot. Yeah, I know. Um, but let me show you how I did what I did. Uh, so again, default black and white conversion, uh, very soft because of the infrared. Um, the global adjustments, pulling down the highlights, uh, ramping up the shadows. I mean, it would be nice if this would go to a minus 200 and a plus 200, right? Yeah, it would be great. Shall we yeah, send well, that? Yeah, well, it does. Yeah. No, it does. You just have to know how to do it. In the global controls, you can only do that. Um, you're, you're pegged at 100. But you can come back in and do uh, global. Let me see if I've got, oh, here we go. Here you go. So this is a Everything. paint, the whole damn thing with the paintbrush and do a minus 200 plus 100 uh, highlight and shadow. So that's a global adjustment applied locally because the global adjustments weren't strong enough. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, is, very... is that pretty sneaky? Has that <laughs> occurred to a lot of people that you can multiply by adding multiple overall? Um, That's what you're getting uh, at with your... That's what you're saying with your stacks. You, the, yeah. you can do a stack and then you can do another stack and you can take yes. it further, um, yes. even if you pinned it at the same spot. Yes. And the advantage is that, for example, in this global stack, if I wanted to, I could come in and say, okay, this was great everywhere except for, I'm just going to do this real strong. God, Jeff, I'm actually learning Lightroom here. This is interesting. Yeah. Um, this was good for everything except for right here. So I didn't like it here. So that's like doing a global adjustment with a minus area. Does hmm. that make sense to everybody? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So then let me go through and pick the different areas. Uh, this was minus whites, minus highlights to, to tame that because by increasing uh, the lightning, uh, it kind of tended to blow out. This stuff was uh, lightening the shadows, darkening the highlights. Uh, another plus 100 shadows uh, to really bring up the uh, deep shadow information, plus a lot of clarity. Uh, again, minus highlights, plus whites, and plus clarity. Um, down in there, some of these areas are just localized adjustments. Uh, this is another minus 100, plus 100. And then coming down in here, doing some of the individual adjustments, uh, adjusting when, the guide. When you were doing those, Jeff, you were pretty zoomed in on the image, I presume, so you could work the tools, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, so, I mean, uh, if, if, if you work it, again, if you think of global being the overall image and local being drawing the attention to areas that you want to have attention, that makes sense. Yep, makes total sense. So, Tom, is that pretty, pretty, uh, pretty decent in terms oh, of... Oh, yes, uh, yes. I, I tend to add too much contrast, and this shows me how I can back it out a little bit. Yeah. You guys look cute sitting there together, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let me see. Uh, this was interesting. Um, let me just show you some of these, and I can talk about what I did. So, uh, for example, the upper left is the default. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Um, the bottom image, the purple label, is the JPEG that was supplied. Whose is this? Are they here? Um, don't, no? don't, he don't hear them. Okay. 
So the upper right is the one that I did. Uh, and uh, again, I kind of emphasize texture and detail. Um, I actually kept the sun in uh, and actually remade the sun because by uh, knocking down the whites, uh, it actually, uh, I had to recreate the sun. Um, I darkened everything, gave it a color, and then came back in with a smaller brush. Uh, let me just show you very briefly what that looked like. So here is plus, that is the actual sun after doing these tone adjustments. You see where I'm darkening this down? Oh, that was lightening up. That's darkening. That's uh, another darkening. So uh, a lot of times this blown out, uh, you know, and, and digital has a real very specific look when you've got a blown out uh, uh, sensor. Um, let me bounce to this one. Uh, dancers, uh, whose is this? Anybody? Anybody? No. Nope. No? Okay. The people you know, had to leave early. They're going to they'll watch the recording, so I'm sure they'll okay. see it. Uh, so the one on the left is mine. The one on the right is theirs. Uh, the big thing, the big difference is I tried to maintain color texture detail while increasing the saturation because this thing is all about color. Uh, and, you know, uh, a lot of that has to do with increasing vibrance, although not uh, local saturation. And then coming in here and locally adjusting things, uh, increasing clarity, increasing saturation. This was just very simple texturing. Uh, I got rid of this guy, the brightness of this guy's shirt and the camera cover. It was funny, I didn't realize how many of these people are actual photographers. I gotta tell you, <laughs> I think that guy's camera's hosed. But um, so anyway, let me move on to uh, what would be the next most uh, interesting, most difficult. Um, <clears throat> this was interesting. Another, this is Mueller. Are you here? Mueller or Mu No, that's Tom. That's my. Oh, well, that's Tom again. That's okay. Well, art in Paris. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> basically, I did the same thing there than I did to the others. Uh, let me just show it briefly. Uh, the image on the right is yours. The image in the center is mine. And the image on the left is the default grayscale conversion. Uh, and you and I basically had slightly different um, ideas about what was interesting texture and detail. For example, you apparently spent a lot of time getting rid of this light area here that I thought was like a real interesting visual. And then you got rid of these two spots or at least minimized it. Uh, but anyway, it's just a matter of going in there and, um, you know, localized tone control. Um, I, I think I did. The other thing that you did, which I could tell you did this in Photoshop is that you made it uh, the whole image narrower. So, that's cheating. I can't do that in Lightroom. <laughs> no, I wish I could, but I can't. That's the limitation of a raw processor. Um, here's one that I wanted to talk about because the interesting thing is uh, the image on the left is the original color image, which, yeah, I agree, it's kind of bland <clears throat> in terms of the coloration. Um, it's, could this have been Cuba? Uh, no, it's um, Sarajevo. Oh, Sarajevo. Okay. Um, interesting that they've still got the same decrepit age, uh, <clears throat> different, <clears throat> different um, 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 
similar materials though. Uh, uh, but anyway, the image on the left is the color image. The image on the far right is your black and white conversion. Uh, but the interesting thing is that um, just looking at the two, um, I'm actually a little punchier, particularly in the center uh, than you are. Um, I love the texture on the walls. And the floor. Yes. And I look at that difference on the floor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the other thing I was going to ask is, um, are you sure you wanted it black and white? Because I really rather like the color. <laughs> black and white. <laughs> They're very big on black and white, Jeff. Huh? <laughs> they do some marvelous black and white work. I've you know, been watching them for years. Okay. But, uh, okay, so here's another one that is mildly interesting. Um, not terribly challenging and, you know, the best that I could do is the best that I could do. But uh, a lot of this is just localized adjustments. Good. Huh? I said it's pretty darn good what you're doing there. Yeah, well, uh, gradient adjustment to darken the highlights, increase the shadows, <coughs> increase the <clarity. clears throat> I didn't do a lot of painted adjustment. Just one. Uh, just dragging across the center there to uh, minus clarity and minus the blacks just to tame down that bright horizon. I like that, Jeff. Thank you. Um, okay, so this is another one. I guess I can't convince. Um, no, you can't. I know no, I like okay. it in color, but I really want okay. black and white. Yeah. Okay. So the one on the right is yours and the one on the left is mine. Love it. Basically approach the same way. Uh, That's mine. That's his. Oh. Does that make sense? Yes. Very much. All right. Uh, this one was interesting uh, because it's kind of a challenge, this playhouse thing. Um, uh, I guess it would be really difficult to retouch out the screen. <laughs> um, wait for it. There we go. The upper left is the default. Uh, the bottom is my rendering and the upper right is, uh, no, the bottom is uh, the, the JPEG from the photographer, uh, Jay, and then the upper right is what I did. Um, Jay, what do you think? Let me Get rid of that. It's, it's interesting. I, I, I like the color palette that you have better than mine, to be honest. Yeah. One thing. So, so uh, and, and how you, you open things up a little more. Yeah. Well, again, it's, it's kind of taming the highlights and, and, and taming the color and the shadows. Um, yours is a little bit more graphic in terms of the lights and the darks. Also, the crop. I suppose, I mean, depending upon what you're going to do with the image, um, your crop is concentrating on the four kids. Mm -hmm. My crop shows a little bit more of the overall environment. Uh, and I can understand, you know, in the grand scheme of things, if you get rid of that hand and keep her butt, um, you know, that's kind of interesting. Uh, although I'd actually like a little bit more room and then I would retouch out the hand there and mm -hmm. the corner up there. Uh, let's see, this one was pretty challenging, but again, being able to do localized mine, adjustment. Jeff. Huh? It was Jeremy, that's mine. Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, did you get wet shooting this? A bit <laughs> damp, yeah. Yeah, pretty damp. Uh, so what do you think of my rendering? You didn't give me yours, so I didn't no, know I what didn't. To... Well, I, it's very different from mine. I, I cropped it pretty much square, so I'd removed all the man-made stuff, all the stuff on the left. Uh-huh. Um, and I had, I tried much less with the clarity, so I, I was contenting myself with a lot of mist and atmospheric, sorry, um, impressionistic stuff. So a bit further, bit further than that, to, to the, to the, just to the left of that um, pole on the left. 
So keep going or? Keep going, yeah, a bit further. Bit further. Keep going, right? Keep two get, more poles. Get the fuel off. Right so, there. Yeah, stop about there. Yeah. And then in fact, I wasn't quite, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. But then I, I didn't, you've, you've done, yeah, you've got a lot of blacks down and I didn't, I hadn't taken the blacks down any, 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 anything like as far. So m mine's much more. Pastel. Yeah. But I like, um, I like this different interpretation. It's interesting. Well, you know, a lot of that is just crunching the blacks. Yeah. Um, and, you know. What, what locals have you got for that? Uh, I had a mask stop to darken the sky a bit. Yeah, darkening down the sky. Exactly like that's that. That's a plus clarity and a little bit of warming. <clears throat> then a lot of water work with plus clarity, plus texture, a little cooling, and plus sharpness. Uh, this is, I have no idea what the hell I did. You've got a, a trivial increase of temperature. Uh, no. Just a little bit of overall warming. Uh, a lot of brightening up in the deep shadows. Yeah. I suspect yours will print a lot better than mine will. Um, yeah. Well, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, uh, a lot of it is dependent upon this is plus clarity. Uh, a lot of it is dependent upon a couple of things. Number one, what paper you're printing, uh, because if you're printing this on a uh, an image, uh, this kind of image um, on a watercolor paper uh, or a matte paper, it would be really flat and you really got to stomp on stuff mm -hmm. or go the other way and let it stay very pastel and dreamy. Uh, and if that were the case, I would probably come into this and add additional texture. Um, you know, I've got like 14 gigabytes of texture that I've bought, just canvas and paint and old cement and all kinds of weird textures. Uh, when I started doing the tin types, I, I started collecting a lot of textures. Um, and then make it even more textural and more uh, kind of of the um, uh, impressionist or <clears throat> the pictorialist. Uh, what paper uh, would you use for that if you were printing that? Well, my feeling is if you're going to print on watercolor paper, um, it's pretty stupid to use a really smooth paper. Uh, so I like to print on something that's got a lot of texture to it. So the fiber uh, or the Somerset Velvet Enhanced, uh, right. although it's got OBAs, uh, but something that actually has a paper texture um, and also depending upon the relative size, um, I've gotten into doing more smaller prints. I'm getting tired of big prints because uh, I'm getting tired of paying for really expensive frames. You know what I'm saying? I and I like images that I can hold in my hand. Um, so I like 16 and 20 uh, and down. I actually gave away my Epson 9900 printer to a, a community imaging center. Um, You're talking to someone who's just bought a 7500. Yeah. Well, uh, I've got a, a P800, so I can do 1620. My favorite print size really is 24 by 30. So I'm going to buy one of the new Epsons. I'm actually trying to get Epson to give me one of the new Epsons. Um, but uh, we'll see how that goes. It's um, really nice. Here's, so, with it. Uh, so anyway, uh, again, Thank I'd you. be happy to send you the XMP file so you can kind of see up close. Uh, Please do. I'd be really, I'd be really interested to have that. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, somebody snuck in an HDR uh, and two renderings on the lower right. The two purple ones uh, are the fellow that sent the image. Are you online? Yes, that's mine. Let's speak. What's Harvey your name? Copel. Okay. What's your name? Harvey. Harvey? Yes. Oh, Harvey Copel. Okay, Harvey. Uh, so um, the top three are the three exposures. 
Um, and let me get rid of those because those are the source images. So you did the two purple labels, which are the upper right and the bottom. Wait for it. There we go. It's coming up. Uh, and then I did the upper left. And again, a lot of this is seasoned to taste. Um, uh, you tended to uh, have some image artifacts that drive me nuts, particularly in the um, area of leaves where you're trying to darken down the sky. Uh, it, it, it's very difficult to do that when you got a lot of high frequency textural information. Um, but the upper left is what I did. Um, and, and Harvey, what do you think of my version versus your version? I like it a lot. I think it's much nicer. Okay. Uh, so a couple of things. Let me get rid of one of these so that they're bigger. Uh, one of the things that I did was uh, I, I liked the lightning of this, but I liked, I mean, it's full color, so I made everything kind of more fall colory. Um, I did like the darker sky. And so <clears throat> let me just show you. It, it is difficult and tedious. And, and quite honestly, were I to do this, I probably would do this a little bit more accurately. Let me wait for it. There we go. You can see that the uh, <clears throat> the tools in Lightroom are somewhat limited in terms, you got to be really careful because you'll end up getting um, uh, white edges on things. So uh, I would not make this a big print. I'd have to go back in and work on this harder and maybe have to do it in Photoshop to get more color in the sky. Does that make sense? Yes. But this is what I did in terms of, uh, this is the global adjustment, which isn't bad in and of itself, uh, just by adjusting the basic panel. But then this is what I went and did locally. And <clears throat> some of the areas that I worked on was, of course, the sky to, uh, <clears throat> make the sky uh, bluer. Uh, and of course, I got rid of the uh, blueness on the uh, birch trees. I adjusted the hue and the color of uh, this area here and adjusted basically to get uh, much more of the warm hue, you can see under the hue adjustment, it's a minus 16. That makes it, the green is much uh, warmer, less cold, more warm. Does that make sense? Yep, it makes, looks yes. cool. Good at that. Uh, and then also working on the bottom, I did do some gradients. Uh, again, working on darkening the highlights, darkening the whites, coming back in and uh, erasing where the trees were uh, because I didn't want the, the tree uh, trunks to get darker. Then stacking up a couple of down here uh, to darken, to reduce the mid-tone uh, uh, contrast. Negative clarity sometimes really helps when you're trying to concentrate your um, area of focus and interest. So, and then uh, minus saturation. <clears throat> Does that make sense? So you like this one. Um, uh, it, it, you know, this is the default of the HDR and this is a good HDR example. This is the global just the ability to be able to pull the the uh, tone out of the um, uh, and actually I didn't even adjust the highlight shadows whites or blacks huh 
because uh, then I immediately started going in there on the locals. Um, okay, this one in particular was pretty challenging. Uh, this is Dan McCabe. Yep, I gave you a sow's ear. Huh? I gave you a sow's ear. Well, was, yeah, it was a, it was a late entry. <laughs> yeah, but did I make a silk purse out of it? Um, it's different from my rendition of it. Um, I, I do like the, the issue that I had with mine was, um, with the ice was, was too blue. So what I tried to do was get the, the, the red through the, the top part of the ice and leave the bottom part bluish. I also cropped it very tightly to, uh, essentially get rid of the stuff in the, in the front, but this was a, you know, this is sunrise in, in progress, a minute to do it, and um, waves on the other side of the ice. Yep. Was this in um, the uh, Iceberg Lagoon or? Yeah, the, Di the Diamond Beach, yeah. Yeah, Diamond Beach. Um, yeah, I can see getting rid of it, but the problem is if you, if you don't want anything soft, you got to go way up to here. Yeah, and I, I did wind up doing that. I, so I got I got a two to, I think two to one aspect ratio. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, and then I had to get rid of the the uh, the the um, refraction effects up in the sky as well. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I did is I just made the foreground even softer. Yes, I I I saw that technique earlier, and that that makes a lot of sense. Well. Like I said, I mean, and you can actually bring it up and then come in and paint it away on areas that you don't want it. Right. Um, you know, this is a judgment call. Um, you could get rid of this. Yeah, and that's kind of what I did. That, that's about the framing that I had, yeah. About like that? About that. Did you end up right, putting well, blue in, in there, Jeff? I beg pardon? Did you end up cooling that uh, ice off or putting blue in at all? Just to... Oh, of, yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Added warmth um, and saturation uh, plus clarity. Uh, there's the warmth. This was done with the uh, auto mask. And also mucking about a little bit with the sun, uh, brightening up the sun while uh, uh, lightening up the blacks around it. Uh, I would have to probably come back in and fix the highlight recovery here uh, you see how that the black bleeds? That's one of the limitations and problems. You'd have to go back in there and fix that because this uh, the highlight recovery stuff that I did uh, and clarity ends up making that bleed. Um, I actually saturated the hell out of the sky. Um, I was torn about keeping or getting rid of the clouds. Well, actually, those are, that's lens flare. Well, it could be. It looked like clouds. No, the clouds <laughs> were pretty smooth that, that day. And you see some of that texture in, in the sky, but there were, there were no clouds per se. What, okay. One of the things that I see here is, is the halos between the sky and the ground. Can you talk about that a little? Um, you're talking about along here? Yeah, uh-huh. Well, that's a function of uh, one of the adjustments that I did. Let me see. Uh, I would probably want to come back in here and more accurately get rid of this. Okay. There is this tendency of particularly if I'm working fast, 
there's this tendency of uh, being a little bit sloppy. And uh, I think that's really what that is. <clears throat> also, there's a natural tendency to, <clears throat> uh, this is probably clarity on the main. Yeah. If I lower the clarity, uh, that should start to come down. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is, now I could actually, there are times when <clears throat> I just live with it and say, well, that's a feature, not a bug. And then there are other times that I'll come in and Photoshop and use the clone tool set to darken only and, um, and wipe it out. But yeah, that's a function of uh, the, that's an artifact based upon the limitation of some of the, the tool set. Okay. One of the things that I've been told is, is if you crank down the highlights all the way and you crank up the shadows all the way, that will tend to induce halos around your edges? Yes. Yeah, dark halos and light halos. Okay. That's what I was talking about in the top of that one uh, yeah. ice. The hey, big Jeff? iceberg here. Right. You can see how the shadows are bleeding in mm -hmm. and you get that real light edge that's partially a sharpening as well as uh, a, uh, and, and that's just stuff that you've got to deal with. Um, but yeah, it drives me nuts too. Okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Jeff, we're, we're past the time. We've got a lot of people leaving since it's over after 6.30. Okay. Um, maybe we, we could do a couple questions and answers and then... You well, know. let me do this one. All right. And the reason is that I have no idea. Uh, is the guy that did this here? Yes, Bill Lazar. Uh, it's Bill. So Bill? Okay. Ah. So I have no idea. I've never done any Astro stuff. Uh, and, and I found it an interesting challenge because... Uh, 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 if you if you if you play too much with it, you start going nuts about what is noise and what are stars. Uh, so, what do you think about the rendering that I did, Bill? I I like how you brought out a lot of the detail on the color. Yeah, some of that is false color. Some of it is right. is uh, what was underneath there. Right. Um, I think I would still probably want to go back <clears throat> in cut down on the number of, of uh, uh, stars showing. Um, just, you know, to kind of simplify the sky a little bit, but uh, I'm not an astro guy, so um, it's interesting. Uh, there was one other, who, uh, Nelson? Is he here? Uh, Nelson, yeah. Yeah. Bob, are you here? You might have no, signed off already. Did. Well, this was interesting because the one on the left uh, is what he, what he gave me, and the one on the right is what I came up with or decided I wanted to do. Uh, so anyway, uh, this was an interesting and challenging job. Uh, you can see how some of the images, um, it was interesting to compare what they did with what I did. And a lot of it is just my tendency of warming highlights, cooling shadows, maintaining contrast, uh, and opening up shadows uh, where possible. Uh, so other than that, I mean, it was fun working on everybody's images, but they're not my damn images. So <laughs> I'm not responsible for them. Um, so what do you, what do you what do you think, Kevin? Was this, uh, I, I, I think it was great. I, I got some ideas for the future, which you and I can talk about over the next couple of days, even take some things further. Hey, maybe it would even be a, Kevin does a raw as Jeff does a raw shootout or something. We can have some fun with this um, and, and yeah, keep but people at the same time. Doing that with you, is it's unfair because it would be like wrestling with a one-armed man. Well, because you'd just be losing. You'd be the one-armed guy. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't think so. Oh, I know so. Yeah. Shall uh -huh. I stop sharing my screen? Yep. Why don't you stop it? We'll go back to the. Well, grid. let me just do one thing. I'm going to do a shift F.
I'm going what to... we can do is we'll go back to the grid view and anybody here that's left over, you guys can unmute and uh, we'll go for another 10 or 15 minutes to seven o'clock at the latest. Um, and you can ask general questions if you want or just have a chat. We'll see if we can do that at all. Okay, so there's this, this, and this. Okay, so I got, there we go. All right. Um, if anybody wants to ask a question, you guys, I can unmute all of you, which I'm going to unmute everybody right now. You can mute yourselves. And if anybody has anything to say or just want to have a conversation, please feel free. I have a question. It's Jay. Okay, Jay. Jay. Yeah, yeah Jay. a question. If you have a, a raw file, it's in color. I want to convert it to black and white and end up with a black and white image. Other than cropping the raw file, let's say, should I do anything while it's still in color or just bring the raw file, you know, as, as a black and white image and do everything as a black and white image? Well, just understand that um, until you actually do the conversion and export it, it's still a color image. You just have black and white adjustments on top of the color. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, there are some things that you might want to do. For example, once you convert to black and white, you can vary the white balance rendering. And you, I, I did that on one of the images. And, and it's, it, you know, it's another flavor of black and white. <clears throat> uh, sometimes you want to do layer masking and I'd have to think about it for a moment. Um, there may be some adjustments that you'd want to do with the background, I'm sorry, the, the uh, uh, auto mask that you'd want to do in color if there were substantial adjustments that you wanted to do. Uh, because once you render it to black and white, it's so the, the auto mask is using the RGB numbers underneath the crosshairs of the rendered file. So it's using the black and white. So there may be ways of getting to the color image locally that you would lose by converting that to, uh, when it's in black and white. But the easy thing to do is you could pop it into color just in the, um, in the develop module, go from black and white to color do a localized adjustment, create the mask in color, and then pop back to black and white to make the adjustments. Does that make uh, sense? Yeah, it, it, it does. Now, what if I'm using like silver effects? Because once I go into silver effects... Yeah, well, then you're hosed. Then you're yeah. fucked. Okay. It's like, oh, I want to <laughs> no, thank... I don't know if that's right, right but you know, you know, you go... No, no, the reason and then... is you've lost the, 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 raw, the raw editing parameters. All right. Okay, I want to thank you, by the way, in early 2000s at the uh, Epson Photo Academy, you gave me a copy of Photoshop. So I'm forever grateful. did? Great. Yes, you did. You were very nice. Well, that was damn sweet of me. <laughs> thank you again. Very unusual. Uh, You're a lucky man. <laughs> That's good. Jeff, can I ask a question about uh, local adjustment stacking? Sure. Do you, is there any way that you can change the order once you've already done it, or you have to make sure that you do it in exactly the sequence you want because you're stuck with that order? No, you can't reorder it. Um, you could, you, you know, erase it and redo it. That's pretty much it. Uh, the other thing that you can't do is, is uh, it's not easy to duplicate it's not easy to invert. You can't invert the mask. That drives me nuts. There, there, there. I didn't even bother to get in to show the the mask control that you can have using um, luminance and uh, other parameters. Um, that's kind of a. Although this was somewhat advanced in terms of the concepts, uh, each tool you could dive into it and. Uh, um, uh, learn an awful lot on how to do stuff. It's really good. Look, also, uh, let me interject something here. 
If any of you, after having experienced this program, if you think of anything in particular you might want in the future, uh, please drop me a line either through the message system on the site or an email or whatever you'd like. And um, like I said, we're, we're considering doing a lot of different things, some which will just be put up as an article and others that can be done as a Zoom thing where you can all participate. So we're open to a lot of ideas, especially because it looks like we're going to be in this condition for a while. So um, reinventing wheels, as they say, you know. Oh, I like Jim Dobbins. Jim, are you still here? Oh, Jim wrote something in the chat. He said, if you gents do a shootout, remember it isn't prudent to mess with a pixel genius on his home turf. Uh -huh. Let's see what else we have. Anything? The website, somebody just asked a question about what the website is. The website's photopxl.com. Photopxl.com. please stop over and join. You can actually join. It's free to join. And then you can be part of the community and, you know, you get notified of these things. Yeah. Chet Raskin asked about why not using the uh, range masking. Um, and, and that's true. That would have been uh, useful. Um, uh, like I said, there's a way of drilling down individually on a lot of these things. Cool. Hi, uh, I'm Michelle here. Um, Jeff, since you have access to maybe uh, large room people, the one thing I find sometimes a bit um, frustrating is the uh, adjustment brush pins on some of my images uh, are hard to find. Um, I know I had an adjustment done two months ago when I worked on an image, and now I'd like to find it again, and sometimes I have to hunt for it because it doesn't appear easily sometimes. If, mm -hmm. they, if they can do that, that'd be great. Um, well, one of the things that uh, was to, has been talked about is the ability to use the tab key or some command key to tab through all the active pins. Okay, yeah. Um, so that, uh, and then to be able to have a highlight mode so that it would kind of, you know, show up in a more obvious manner. Because I agree, um, <clears throat> particularly when you're doing. A, a lot of different close in uh, adjustments. Uh, it's hard to get the one pin uh, exposed to show the pin underneath. Uh, so it's not just a matter of not being able to find the pin, it's a difficulty of actually activating the pin. That's correct. So, uh, yes. It's a problem, but sometimes it is. Yeah, John Michael, I'll, I'll pass that along and, and, um, um, uh, how much are you willing to pay for that feature? I I pay every month for it. No, I I, I pay for the entire creative creative suite thing. So I think what eighty. Yeah, but I mean, uh, the engineers are open to bribes. Ah, okay. <laughs> In the past, they've been bribed with wine. Ah, okay. Chocolate, dinners, single malt yeah. scotches. Um sipping tequila. So uh, all, all I'm saying is that, that anything can be had for a price. It just depends on what you're willing to pay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but I agree. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank yes, Stephen, I do pass the bribes. A lot of times I'm the one doing the bribing to get what I want. A lot of times in this business, um, it's all about the bribes. Uh, actually, Ben is bribable, but Ben is in San Francisco. You're talking about Ben Bibble? I believe he's San Francisco. Uh, and some of the engineers, yes, I do know they would accept weed as a gratuity. <laughs> <laughs> good. All right. Doug, good to see you. Good to be here. I see, keep seeing your posting. Some of the people I recognize their names. Oh, there's Stephen. Uh, you just Tom and Marge. Uh, are you on Facebook? 
Yes, Facebook and Instagram. Are, are we friends on Facebook? Uh, no, but we should be. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'll the thing about it you. is, well, as long as you're not a right wing um, <laughs> um, wing nut, you can be a, a Republican, I don't care, as long as you're just not a wing nut. Uh, and as long as, as the majority of your Facebook posts have something to do with photographs, I'll be friends with all of you. Uh, right. Just understand if you start posting a lot of shit that pisses me off, uh, I will block you. <laughs> because, uh, you know, my echo chamber wants to echo the music that I want to hear. So um, anything about images and digital imaging and cats, uh, you know, dogs are okay, but cats. Uh, <laughs> but politics, you got to be real fucking careful. And you want highlights to go to minus 200, well, just add another uh, adjustment, a localized adjustment. It, one of the things that I wanted to be able to do uh, is to just start with everything. And, and that's one key that I mentioned last week, is start with everything already painted in and then use the erasing tool to delete the areas that you don't want the adjustment to. Um, a lot of times that's easier than trying to apply stuff and sneak up on things. I think we, we need to call it quits tonight. First off, once again, thanks everybody. I <clears throat> really appreciate it. And big, big thanks to Jeff. Um, really great to do it. And Jeff, I'll be in touch with you in the next day or so and we can go over a few other ideas and things I've got cooking in my head and hear what you got. And um, hey, anybody has ideas, you know, this is a community. Photo PXL is all about that. So feel free to. Uh, drop a note to us or go down the forum and leave a message and start a conversation. But hey, it's, you know, we want to make this your site as much as mine and ours. And, uh, you know, let's have some fun during all this mess here. And one day we're all going to be out taking pictures again in faraway places. I can hardly wait for that. All right, guys. Well, good night, everybody. Thanks very much. Stay safe. And uh, we'll see you online here with another program in the very near future. Yeah.